Hey guys, a really common question I get is how do I network a lighting console to a media server, specifically a Resolume machine? So today I'm gonna to walk you through how to do that. First, you're gonna come up to your setup and you're in your setup menu and you're gonna come down to MA Network Configuration. I'm using my at-home PC setup, so normally these red boxes will be green if you're on an actual console. On the back of a actual MA console, there are two ethernet ports, ethernet port one and ethernet port two. Ethernet port 1 is used for generic networking of stations between MA consoles. So if you're using like a primary backup setup or if you've got multiple users running the same show file for whatever reason, that's what this is going to be. So always just assign this to some kind of generic IP address setup. What we're concerned about today though is Ethernet port 2 because this is the port that will handle outputting ARNET or SAC SACN and that's what we care about. So I just configure this to 2.10.10.55 because ArtNet operates in 2. Dot something range. And so it has to start with the two and these other numbers don't matter. So this is the address I've been using for a long time and this is just how I use it. So now that we're done with that, we come down to network protocols. Under network protocols, you have one line usually to start and the mode is always set to output auto. I like to come in and change it to output broadcast or output unicast. With output unicast, you can sh select which destination IP address you're going to be outputting to. And I will sometimes do that if I'm having network issues, but normally I just leave it to network broadcast. Now the most important step of this is to come down to your ArtNet output and click active. Once this box is yellow, that means you're good and you're outputting. We can now exit out of this and go configure our Resolume machine. Hey guys, so now that we've got our Grand MA lighting console configured, we need to configure our Resolume laptop to start getting ready to take input from the lighting desk. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come down to our network settings. Go to my network and internet settings and open that up. I always turn my Wi-Fi off, which it already is, so I don't have to adjust it. And then I come down to my Ethernet, and I go to Change Adapter Options. I need to change my Ethernet to Properties, and I need to come to this Internet Version Protocol 4, or IPv4, double-click that, and I need to assign an address, because we're just going through an unmanned gigabit switch. So there's nothing in this uh, network setup assigning IP addresses that my laptop could take a machine address from. So we're just going to go ahead and click and we're going to do 2.10.10.51 because my lighting desk address is 2.10.10.55. Now I'm just going to click down here and I'm going to see my subnet mask automatically populate. And I'm just going to leave that as is because my computer knows more about that than I do. And I click OK. I can exit out of this. My laptop is now ready to start taking network signal from the Grand MA lighting desk. Now to get Resolume to see what we're or what's being sent over the network, I need to come up to Arena, go to my Preferences, and under my DMX, I need to make sure that this Lumiverse 1 is here. This is what it looks like by default, and I just click New Input. From here, I can start adjusting which universe my Lumiverse is looking at. So Lumiverse is just a virtual DMX universe that my lighting desk would be outputting. In this case, Lumiverse 1 is the same as Universe 1 because my universe is set to 0. In ArtNet terms, Universe 0 means Universe 1. So this means that my laptop with this universe configuration will be looking at ArtNet Universe 0 or on a DMX console or on a lighting console, it'll be Universe 1. If I was to click up, this Universe 1 means that my light, that my Resolume machine will be now listening to Universe 2 from a lighting desk, and so on and so forth. If you have any questions, you can do a little bit of research, and I'll have more videos and tutorials on that later. But for now, you can see that it's looking at my... or For now, we can see that it's got just the default configuration for Universe 1. If you're confused, you can come and expand this tab and then you can click through the universes and it'll show you which values are taking DMX data in from which universe. So you can always find where your console is outputting to and then just adjust accordingly. Now other settings you can adjust here is right here you can see this ArtNet node name. I just left it as default which is Arena and my laptop name. And then there's my network adapter which is 
just my gigabit ethernet controller because everything is coming in via my network line. That's all we need to do for there. Now my laptop and my Resolume machine are ready to start taking DMX ArtNet control from a lighting console. Now I need to just configure my shortcuts. So I come up to shortcuts and I hit edit DMX. Now everything in yellow is something I can assign a channel to for control. I only want a couple of clips and a layer and a couple of layer controls for my lighting desk just to kind of help keep a couple of things synchronized and then everything else I'll just leave for whoever my VJ is or on the fly work. So to get this going, I'm just going to assign a couple clips. Right click, I'm going to go ahead and click DMX, create DMX shortcut. It's going to now assign channel 1 on Lumaverse 1 to this first clip and so on and so forth. As I click, it's going to just start adding more and more channels under the same universe until I max this universe out. This Lumaverse though has plenty of space in it so I'm probably never going to run out because you can create 255 channels on a single Lumaverse so odds are I'll probably be good. So now we can see that I've assigned six clips. Clip 1 at channel 1, clip 2 at channel 2, clip 3 at channel 3, clip 4 at channel 4, clip 5 at channel 5, clip 6 at channel 6. Now I don't want them organized like this. I want this to be clip 1, clip 2, clip 3. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to change the channel to 2. I'm going to do the same to here except instead of 2 I'm going to assign it to 3. So that way I've got clip 1, clip 2, clip 3 all on my layer 1 is being controlled by channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. And then I'm going to change the top to be channel 4, channel 5, and channel 6. So now I've got 1, 2, and 3 as my layer 1 clips and 4, 5, and 6 as my layer 3 clips. Now the last thing I want to do before we're done here is add some layer opacity controls because I don't want the layers to always be visible. I want to be able to fade those in and out from my desk. So over here I'm going to come to my fader control. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a DMX shortcut. So now channel 7 will control my layer opacity for layer 1 and channel 8 will control my layer opacity for channel or for layer 3. And then when we're done and everything's all configured and nice and happy, I can come over to shortcuts and hit stop. Now when I go back to my desk, we can start programming how my lighting console is going to control these clips and these layers. So now that we've finished configuring our Resolume laptop, we're going to finish setting up the lighting desk. So we're going to come back up to setup and we're going to come down here to patch and fixture schedule. Now we're not actually patching fixtures, but the, or the Grand MA lap, or Grand MA desktop doesn't necessarily care if it's a fixture or just a control channel on a laptop. So it's asking me for a layer because I don't have anything else patched in this show file. So we're just going to go ahead and call this layer Resolume. Then we're going to just add a generic dimmer channel that's listed right there. You can add other fixtures from the library using the manufacturer and fixture searcher, but for this instance we just need generic dimmer channels, which we're going to select right here. I am going to change the name from dim1 to res1, so that way I can see which channel we're controlling. So we patched eight, eight different control handles, so we're going to do eight. I'm going to change the fixture ID to 1 and the channel ID to 0 because I like using fixture ID over channel ID. There's really not any major difference, but just personal preference. So for the patch break, this 1.001 means that we're patching at universe 1, address 1, which is where we have our stuff configured on our Resolume laptop. So we're going to go ahead and click Apply. So now you can see that we've populated our Resolume layer with res 1 through 8. Resolume 1 through 6 right here controlling our clips and res 7 and 8 controlling our layer opacities. So we're going to go ahead and close out. It's going to ask us to save and we're going to click yes. And we're going to exit out and we're going to come all the way back here to our fixture window where we can see res through 1 through 8 is now patched with the dimmer channels closed. So now we're going to go ahead and start programming. So to select res 1 we're going to go fixture 1 please. Now select res 1 as indicated by the yellow. We're going to go ahead and make this full. So we're going to click at 100 or right there as you can see on the command prompt at 100 is going to stand for at 100% or full. 
we click please, you can now see that the dimmer channel changed from closed to open. This means that the lighting desk is now sending a command to Resolume to trigger that clip. Resolume doesn't actually care what the value is as long as it's not zero. A value of zero or closed means it's not going to do anything, but a value of 1 through 100 means it will trigger. I like using 100 so that way I can see a value of open or closed as opposed to something in between as you can see right now as I change the value. So we're just going to leave it at 100. And a shortcut for this is to just double click the at button. So I can do fixture 1 at at and it's going to make it open. Now we're going to go ahead and store this to button 220 so we can recall this easier later on. So we click store, and we're going to click button 220 and it's going to make this queue list. We're now going to edit this queue to name clip one or from Q1 to clip clip one. So that way we know that we're triggering clip one every time. And we're gonna come to the label. Now this label button is gonna say clip one, but it's gonna control the entire sequence. And so we would just want to call this layer one. So now when I look at this, I can see that layer one clip one is going to be triggered. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for Resolume 2 and Resolume 3 but with some minor differences. So when we trigger res2, we don't want res1 to be triggered also. So we're gonna go fixture one at zero, we're gonna close res1, and we're gonna go ahead and open res2. So now you can see that res1 is closed and res2 is open. So we're gonna go ahead and store that there. It's now gonna ask you for all these options. We wanna create a second queue so that way we can cycle through which clip is being triggered. So we click second queue. Now, let's do this one more time for our clip 3, which is going to be res 3. So now we can see that res 1 is, op or res 1 is closed, res 2 is closed, and res 3 is open. We're going to hit store and come back to this one and click that. Now that we've added all three, we can just triple click, click the clear, and it will close everything out. Now we want to go through and finish renaming this, so we're just going to click, we're going to go Q2, we're going to go to clip 2, because it's clip 2, and Q3 is going to go to clip 3. Pretty convenient, and you know, as we go on, we can make these changes. So now that we're done with that, we're going to repeat this process for 4, 5, and 6, which are clips 1, 2, and 3 on layer 3. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So now we can see that I've created two clip stacks, one for layer th one and one for layer three. Now, because I'm using the on PC version, I don't have physical buttons, but I have virtual buttons. So I can click the virtual buttons and I'll scroll through my different clips. And you can see that right here. So I click go on layer three, layer or res four, five, and six will all ch change from open to closed in the order that we programmed them. And now the same for layer one. You can see that from one, two, three, it just changes down the line. So now let's go ahead and program Resolume 7 and 8, which are layer opacities. So we're going to go ahead and do fixture 7 at at, which is going to bring our res 7 to full. We're going to come over here to our executor, and we're going to store on this executor right here. And I mean, you can store on whichever executor you want. I'm just choosing this one for today. So I come to store, I click store, I come to my executor, and I click there. The same as before. We want to label these so that way we know what's what. So we're just going to call this layer one op. And we're going to rename it the same thing. So now we can see that it's layer one opacity. And at 100% it is full and in view on the screen. And at 0% there's nothing on screen and everything in between. So now let's go ahead and do that for our other layer. Mixture eight at full, res8 at full, store, executor, and then we're going to just go ahead and rename this real quick. So now we can see we've got a layer 3 opacity and a layer 1 opacity. So we now have full control of our clips. So as we click through our layers 1 and our 3, we can see different clips cycling up on the screen and we can bring the faders up and down bringing which clip is in view on screen in and out. 